his shot. Left wing to Fogg. 12 seconds. They're down two. Underneath to Williams. Driving. Layup off. Stops a three from dead on. And it. Harper made it. Out Johnson Odom. Open. Three. Got it. Lost the basketball. It's on the floor. Shot is up. And it's good. Shot. Welcome to the first ever ITF March Madness Selection Show. I'm your host, Jim Cavell, joined by a panel of analysts today, including the likes of ITF Director of Training, Lewin Wynn, and of course, one of our newest coaches here at ITF, Zachariah Townsend. And guys, what an exciting thing this is. We had the selection committee get together. The field has been announced, and now we're going to get it out there through Tribe Vibe TV. Lewin, uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Guys, I'm so excited about the all the outcomes, all the potential matchups. Uh, I'm just excited to get this going. Uh, I'm super excited. I wish I could be in it, but obviously, <laughs> obviously I can't. So uh, just gonna sit back and watch. All right. Well, here we go. Uh, we're gonna start off with the blue region. Each region, just so you know how it's set up, has a north and south portion. There's four regions with two parts, north and south. The winners of each region will make it to the final four taking place on March 31st, but the first round wad is tomorrow. That's right, so let's get it started. Starting here with the North Blue Region and the number one seed, that's right, Joe Allen Sexton. The number one seed in the region gets a bye, so he'll automatically make it to the second round. He can use Tuesday to tune up for his second round matchup, which will be against a female no matter what, because the 4-5 matchup is Katie McElroy and Barb Bemis. That's gonna be a good one, and Joe Allen will have his hands full Thursday in the second round wad. On the bottom portion of the North Blue region is Daniel Broadwater getting the two seed. He gets a bye as well, so he'll get to do a little tuning up on Tuesday to get ready for his Thursday matchup, and it will be with the winner of this one between Amy Campbell, the three seed, and John Robbins. I gotta ask Lewin first off, I mean, wow, there's some really interesting things going on in this region. What's your top matchup here in the March Madness North Blue region? You know, Jim, this is probably one of my favorite regions. Just looking over these matchups, I mean, you've got, you've got the potential of a four seed going head-to-head -head against the first seed. So McElroy and Sexton, depending on what wad comes up, that's going to be an even matchup. And then if, if uh, Campbell can upset Robbins, and Robbins has been coming so consistently, and and uh, if Campbell makes it to second round, Campbell Broadwater, that's going to be interesting to see, especially if the wad is a heavy couplet plus a run, because then you'll see Broadwater really take off on the heavy portion, but Campbell catch him on the run, so I can't Don't wait. you write the wads? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's look now at the south portion of the Blue Region. The number one seed, David Morris. Morris getting a bye. He'll have a, a break on Tuesday as he gets ready for the second round matchup on Thursday. He'll take on the winner of the 4-5 matchup between Ricardo De Rugama mm. and Mark Pretner. One to watch. That'll be a fun matchup. And then the number two seed, Clint Schedinger, will have a bye. So he'll advance to Thursday's second round. And he'll take on the winner of Clay Connor and Blair Ussery Zechariah. You have to have a favorite matchup in this region or several favorite matchups. I mean, this is an exciting South Blue region. Yeah, Jim, I really like that 4-5 matchup between Mark and Ricardo. They go head-to-head -head every day at 280, and I think they'll stop at nothing to pretty much kill each other to try and win this one. <laughs> and then whoever wins that faces out with David Morris. Uh, he just better get ready. And Clint Shattinger is maybe the dark horse in this one. If it's a heavy wide, I think he'll crush it. But if it's a longer Metcon, maybe with some skill, then he might have his hands full. So. Look out for uh, that 4-5 matchup. The 4-5s are going to be a lot of fun in every region. Let's move on now to the North Gray region. And some interesting stuff going on here. The number one seed, James Drake, gets the bye. He'll tune up on Tuesday and get ready for Thursday's second round wad. And he'll take on the winner of Greg Reeves and John Palmer. That's the 4-5 matchup. Then in the bottom portion of the North Gray region, things get very interesting, people. The number two seed, Gretchen Pickett, gets a bye. She'll advance to Thursday. Jim Brady and Daniel Walters had to head 3-6. And then, if the seeds win that are supposed to win, if the favorites win, we have a possible James Drake, Gretchen Pickett matchup, Lou, and what could that be like? Look out, but before, hold on now, don't, 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 si don't shy uh, Brady short. Depending on what that wad is, Brady's been here at downtown, and Technique's been uh, really cleaning up here with the downtown coaches, and he's been looking strong. He really did well today. But 
if if uh, Pickett gets past Brady, then Pickett versus Drake is going to be a nail biter. Wow. I mean, they're both they both have the same strengths. So wow, that's going to be a lot of fun. All right, let's go down to the south portion of the gray region. The South Gray region, the number one seed, another Stern AG man, Brant McDuffie. So McDuffie and Sexton both going to work tomorrow as number one seeds. Pretty strong. McDuffie will have a bye advancing to the third Thursday matchup in the second round, and he'll take on the winner of a very interesting matchup. <laughs> Amanda Straka, who consistently beats me at the Wads here at ITF downtown, the number four seed, taking on number five seed, Scott Ferguson. Scotty. You got your hands full with that matchup. And then as you look down at the bottom of that region, the number two seed, Alan Heaton, will get a bye. And he'll go to Thursday to take on the winner of the 3-6 matchup between Brian B. and Kelly Bemis. Zechariah, Amanda Straka, we see her firsthand here at ITF downtown. Heck of an athlete. Man, I think this might be the first female over the male upset. I'm calling it right now. No oh. offense. No offense, Scott. Oh, Scotty. And then you got Amanda and Brant facing off. I faced off with Brandon a lot. He's a good athlete, but Amanda is coming on strong. And then at the bottom, we got Barb Bemis's daughter Kelly. She's been killing it. Brian, I see the male dominating in this one though. And then I see a, a strong Alan Heaton coming on and Maybe a Brammy Duffy Allen Heaton one and two seed matchup. It's going to be a lot of fun this region, the South Gray region. Look for that. Now we're going to head over to the Orange region first, the north portion of the Orange region. Number one seed, Chuck Andrews. Those eyes, he's always going after it, and every wide hill will be especially doing so on Thursdays. He gets a bye on Tuesday, and he'll take on the winner of our very own Seth Baird, who's behind the camera right now. His heart's beating very fast because he takes on. The number four seed, Alan Kilgore, the winner of that matchup, takes on Chuck Andrews. And then in the bottom portion of the region, the number two seed, Martin Brown, and he'll take on Danny Bowers. If you're wondering why Martin Brown does not have a bye, he's one of the two number two seeds who did not receive a bye, but he's still got a high seeding. He'll take on Bowers on Tuesday, and then Matt Grill and Beth Steed, the 3-6 matchup. So there's a lot going on in this region, as in every region, Lewin. What is the, uh, the notes you would give the viewer who doesn't know a lot about this region? The matchup, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, closest duel, uh, duel, battle to the finish is going to be the Kilgore Baron. I, the four and five seed, I think if that's an AMRAP, it comes down to reps. I'm talking about single-digit reps. If it's, if it's for time, I'm talking it's going to be within a minute. That's, that's my prediction to watch out for that one. What an interesting region that is. As we get down to the south portion of the orange region, Chris Groban gets a number one seed. He dreamt of it, and it came true. Groban, <laughs> congratulations, number one go. seed. He gets a bye to Thursday's matchup, which the second round matchup will be Groban versus the winner of Jenny Boyd and Matt Bradford. Another interesting 4-5. And uh, then Warren Beeson, the number two seed, takes on the seven seed Patrick Connor. Beeson, one of those two two seeds that did not get the bye, but still a high seeding for Beeson Halling from Roxbury Road in the former garage of Forrest <laughs> Walden. We'll see what he does in this unbelievable March Madness setting. And then Matt Campbell gets the three seed, and he takes on Pastor David Platt, the six seed. So, so much going on in this region. Zechariah, this is a fun one here in the South Orange. That's a good one. Uh, this number one seed, Chris Groban, got that knee injury. Oh, Ooh. forgot about that. A little Ooh, snowboarding that, that accident. Be, uh, he might have to uh, push through that a little bit and uh, prove us wrong, but he could be the first number one seed to go down. I, I think so. Oh, and then we got Matt Campbell at the bottom taking on uh, the famous Pastor David. Uh, I just don't see David overcoming uh, that big beast, Matt Campbell. So uh, unless unless you have some running, I mean there you that go. that is a, that is one of the rhino's weaknesses, right? If he has some, you have some long Aren't you programming running. the watts? I am, but we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go into the the last region, the black region. Let's start off in the north portion of the black region. Uh, hold on one second. Okay. A late switch in the black region, so we'll scratch that up. So Matt White will be the number one seed for the black region, and he is going to have the bye into the second round, taking on the winner of the 4-5 matchup between Todd Coder, the five seed, and Nick Gonzalez. That is going to be a very interesting matchup, as is the second round. 
in that portion of the North Black region. Looking in the bottom of the North Black region, Adam Baxter, quite cocky of late. The number two seed, he'll have a bye going into the second round on Thursday, taking on the winner of the 3-6 matchup between Casey Bemis, the sixth seed, and Trey Schaefer. Lewin, I mean, this is, uh, out of all the regions, our selection committee really had a lot of fun with this one. Very competitive region here in the North Black. I'm looking for a, uh, a second seed upset. I'm thinking that either Bemis or Schaefer take down Baxter in second round. That's my prediction. Baxter's very sure of himself. So as we get to the <laughs> last region, we're here in the South Black region. Very, uh, very fun way to end the field of 50 as we're calling it, is uh, we, we have a, a number one seed who is another original garage star, Stephen Ogletree, gets the bye into Thursday, and he'll take on the winner of Peggy Borland and Jonathan Spidel. If Spidel can get past Borland, Ogletree Spidel is going to be very, very interesting. Jevin Sloan gets the bye. He's the two seed in this region, and he'll take on the winner of number three seed, Adam Green, solid athlete, and Amy Hyde, the number six seed, Zechariah. Uh, this is a fun region, especially with an original garage star headlining it. Yeah, I really like that 4-5 matchup between Peggy and Jonathan. They, they both work out at 280, uh, push themselves really hard. I'm really looking for that one. And um, I, like, I like Jevin in this. Number two seed, he's been uh, working his butt off, and uh, that wrist is feeling better. So I'm looking for him to uh, advance to the Sweet 16 in a possible matchup between either Kelly or Steven. We're going to have all kinds of updates next week on Tri Vibe TV on the Sweet 16 field, which will, of course, begin next Tuesday. Then the Elite Eight takes place next Thursday. So Tuesday the 20th is the Sweet 16. Thursday the 22nd is the Elite Eight. And then the Final Four right here, ITF downtown. Big crowd on hand. We're going to have bleachers. It's going to be unbelievable. Uh, Final Four takes place on the 31st of March, the same day as the NCAA Final Four. But before we talk about the future of this competition and where it will go, let's talk about this week. And then also, uh, aside from this week, I want to talk to you about the WADs real quick and just kind of hear uh, the thought process behind the WADs. But also, our favorites, us three, we're going to give you those too. So we'll have all that and more right after this. Welcome back to the ITF March Madness Selection Show. Thanks to our sponsors there. So getting back into it, Lewin, when we first talked about this, I came to you with this crazy idea. You, you and I kind of took it to another level. We talked about having a hopper, and the hopper would spin things before people would actually do the wad, and you could have a runner, beat a strength guy, and all kinds of crazy stuff can happen. We've dumbed it down a little bit because of different logistical reasons, but what's the thought process behind the wads? Well, just to make it fair, everyone knows that I'm the one behind the, the formula and the formula laying down the workouts. And, of course, I know the brackets and the seeds. And, and uh, you know, one could easily say, well, I purposely chose for Platt to upset Campbell and gave a long run for that day, for instance, right? So, to be very, very fair, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create just, hopefully, beautiful couplets that really work together, couplets and triplets, just your typical... Uh, standard movements, maybe even find a singlet in there. There will be uh, a heavy day. There will be, will be some, uh, some uh, gymnastic skill day too. So, but whatever it is, they're all going to go into a pot and they will be randomly drawn. So that way, all the regions competing in rounds one, two, three, etc., we're going to pull at random that day. Remember, round one will be tomorrow, which is the uh, first round, March 13th. And then March 15th will be the second round on Thursday. If you cannot make class on either of these days, you can make up the wad the day after. So Wednesday is the makeup day for the first round. 
Friday is the makeup day for the second round. You just need to see your coach and manager at your ITF location, get it set up. You'll also need to have a counter for every wad. We want to make sure everybody's sticking with the proper standards, repage, etc. Uh, as we get into the favorites, uh, we want everybody to remember we're just picking based on what we see here. Uh, we don't want to hurt any feelings. Um, and I'm going to start things off. I'm going to be bold. It's not very bold because I think the winner of this is going to be Chuck Andrews. I like Chuck's chances. He's a solid number one seed. He's a solid choice. That's my pick to win this whole thing. Um, but we have different opinions, of course, and let's hear what Zechariah thinks. Zechariah, who do you like to win this? Uh, I like Gretchen Pickett. Uh, I think if it comes down to it, if we see a Chuck Andrews-Gretchen Pickett final, that, that male and female duo head-to-head, -head, I think Gretchen will come out on top. It's an interesting component with the one-on-one -on -one when you have these competitors like Gretchen and Chuck going at it one-on-one -on -one with the crowd. I mean, could you imagine yourself three minutes of burpees with Trey across from you one-on-one -on -one with a crowd? I mean, it'd be pretty intense, huh? Yeah, I'd probably get at least a couple more reps in there for sure just based on the intensity. Right. So, very interesting stuff. Lewin, who do you like? Guys, I've been thinking about this, and there's a reason why. I won't even really tell you why, but my favorite overall champion to be crowned at the end, you're going to see Brad McDuffie. Brad McDuffie, bold decision. So, Brad McDuffie, Chuck Andrews, and of course, Gretchen Pickett are picked by us, but who will you pick? Well, we'd love to hear your comments and feedback on who you like to win the ITF 2012 March Madness Challenge. And of course, make sure you're cheering on your fellow athletes as they compete in this wonderful competition starting on Tuesday, March 13th, continuing into the second round on Thursday, March 15th. And we'll have an update before the Sweet 16 starts next week on our next edition of Tribe Vibe TV. For Lou and Wynn and Zechariah Townsend, I'm Jim Cavell. Thanks to Progenics for sponsoring this wonderful show. And once again, tune in next week for Tribe Vibe TV's update on the 2012 March Madness.